Well, we just saw Begin Again, and the way this show works is we review a movie in two parts. The first part is spoiler free. Um, we tell you whether it's something that you might want to go see, um, who we might recommend it to, what we thought about it without going into spoilers or anything. And then we give you a signal, and after that signal, we go into more detail and talk in uh, potential spoiler territory about the rest of the thing. So um, if it's something you've already seen, or if it sounds like something you're not interested in, you just want to hear the rest of our thoughts, you can watch the rest from there. Um, so begin again. Um, this is the new uh, John Carney movie, which he, uh, the last movie he did was Once. Uh, which a lot of people I know really like. It's another uh, music movie. Um, and I actually saw this movie about three or four months ago in a test screening. Um, and I liked it then. I liked it again. Um, I don't know that there was very much that was changed about it, but they did change the one thing that was <laughs> terrible about the original screening, um, which was the title. It used to be called Can a Song Save Your Life? which is a terrible title for <laughs> anything. Um, and um, the answer to that question is no, and the answer to whether that should be a title is no. Um, so they change it to Begin Again. Um, it's a great movie. Uh, the, the, the writing and directing is very good. Uh, Mark Ruffalo, Kira Knightley are very good in it. Um, just all around, it's, it's a fun movie. Um, it's a good music movie. I like... Uh, how realistic it is. It doesn't try to um, kind of paint this fairy tale story of what uh, what being a musician is like mm -hmm. or what making music is like. Um, and it, it it has a a decent soundtrack. Um, I, I was happy to see that John Carney didn't write all the music either. <laughs> like that that's something that kind of gets. A, it gets a little bit too um, sort of echo chambery about once is that it's just all him all the time mm -hmm. and um, he doesn't appear in this movie he's he's just in the writing and directing side and I think that the movie's a lot stronger for it so I would definitely recommend it if it uh, if you get the chance to go see it definitely go see it so what'd you guys think mm -hmm. yeah I would agree I really liked it um, it was it was very uh, accurate into what it's like to be a performer. Um, it was just a lot going on that I really liked. It was also kind of a love letter to New York City, yeah, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of different themes going on in it, like what does it mean to be genuine versus actually getting something out that people might listen to or see, mm -hmm. um, and what it's like to be uh, successful and creative in the modern era. Um, also had a certain, you know, I thought there was themes of like disillusionment, disillusionment in it mm -hmm. that I really liked uh, with Mark Ruffalo's character. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, I would highly recommend it um, if you like kind of a, I don't know, slower paced, um, you know, real relationship based movie. This would be for you. I really liked it. Cool. Yeah. Um, I liked it. I, I liked it a lot. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know why I'm qualifying it. I, do, I did. I, I liked I liked it very much. It took me a little while to get on board with yeah, the movie, I, I guess. Um, Mark Ruffalo's character is a little hard to take at first of a mm -hmm. little bit of like, I've I've seen this before. I just recently read the book, uh, Visit from the Goon Squad, and this movie was very reminded similar, me yeah. of it so yeah. much. Also being mm -hmm. about a down-on-his-luck record producer and kind of the people around him. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed it. Um, Kira Knightley is very good. Mark Ruffalo, of course, is great. He's Mark Ruffalo. Um, Adam Levine is surprisingly fun as a as He's Adam Levine. He's perfect for that role. Yeah, he's <laughs> perfect. He really is. Um, With his beard. I didn't. I didn't like the music as much as Once. I. I really. Yeah. I loved Once. I don't know that there was. There's no falling slowly in this movie. Yeah. And um, so I. I don't know. There was something. I felt as a music movie, maybe once is a little bit better than this, but as a movie movie, I I was more engaged in Begin Again, yeah. uh, maybe. Uh, but I'll say that I, I liked yeah. them both, and um, I will be uh, definitely continuing to follow this director. I, I enjoy his work very much. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's the 
the short version. Um, if you want to go see it, please do. Don't let us ruin it for you. Um, but otherwise, stick around. We'll take, mm -hmm. talk a little bit more detail and um, potentially get into you know plot spoilers and things of that nature. So um, yeah, like I said, I saw this movie a couple of months ago, and I was I was really surprised by how good it was. Mm -hmm. um, and not that I didn't think it would be good, but I expected it to be you know, once chapter two, <laughs> um, and it's very, it, it's a much bigger production than once was. Um, there's a lot more people in it. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's also a lot more depth in the relationships you have, um, Mark Ruffalo and his partner that he's kind of falling out with, yeah. um, mm -hmm. at the record company, um, the sort of undercurrent of, how the music music industry is changing and mm -hmm. him trying to either adapt to that or fight, you know, reject that, mm -hmm. uh, that moving on that is going on with it. Um, there's Mark Ruffalo and his relationship with his wife and his relationship with his daughter. Um, and then there's Kira Knightley's relationship with, um, her boyfriend, um, which, it's interesting because I think a lot of people, uh, myself included, um, cause I, I watched the trailer before I went to the screening and in the trailer, they show, um, the scene where he's imagining the arrangement mm -hmm. over the top of her playing in mm -hmm. the, in the nightclub. Right. I, I liked that scene. I, I really liked that scene. Yeah. By the way, it was very cute. There's uh, a lot of people. That was one moment where I was like, I'm not sure where this is going. <laughs> when, like, the haunted instruments started playing on their own. But it ended up working. Like, the way he described how that was what he was seeing in his brain as so, a producer. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. what, what you're saying is what a lot of people have problems with when they watch the trailer mm -hmm. is they think, like, they don't want to see, like, the magic man that comes up with the magic arrangements right. and mm -hmm. he hears in his head the the perfect version of the song um but the movie's not like that at all and it does yeah, they just do really, it the one time <laughs> yeah it's yeah. this really interesting structure where mm -hmm. it starts out with her playing the song and none of that stuff happens mm -hmm. and then it backs up you see mark ruffalo just sort of like wow that's amazing and then it mm -hmm. backs up and it plays his whole story up to that point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, like that, that device, device that they use yes. ex throughout the film. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as it progresses on, they gain kind of like a band of misfits to record this album on the streets yeah. of New York. And every time they introduce a new band member, you get kind of a little like, well, let's back up. Let's see where just they a came bit from. About them. It was yeah, fun. and just added just enough uh, flavor to those characters. It that was I very really... much a literal getting the band together movie. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I mean, loved. I, I enjoy that that kind of trope. Yeah, uh, my favorite being the piano player for the little ballerinas. Mm -hmm. the, you know, just like as <laughs> oh, soon as he got an opportunity to do anything else, he was out of there, and yeah, that is yeah. such a perfect uh, mm -hmm. description of, or feeling. You know, when you're a creative person and you're waiting for that. Oh, I have an actual project. Well, screw this thing I was doing to pay the bills. I'm gonna yeah, go do the project now. This is something I can now. care about. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I liked the most about the movie because it treaded a really fine line between like, what does it mean to be genuine, and what mm -hmm. does it mean to get your voice out there to get people to see what you're doing. And at certain moments, it was like, well, but this feels like an advertisement for Apple products, <laughs> but it was still pretty genuine. I thought mm -hmm. that they they had a good balance between mm -hmm. like, yeah, you need a little bit of this, but you also need to stick to your vision if you're going to put yeah. something out that is mm -hmm. genuine and worth seeing. And ultimately, I thought they did an excellent job of striking that balance, not only like in the story, but in like the movie itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if I, if I can back it up to tone and uh, preconceived notions, I had not seen the trailer for this, but having seen once... I, I expected this movie to be a whole lot more bittersweet, and it mm. really isn't. It's it's very light. Yeah, it's very lighthearted. It's, uh, it's much more celebratory, I guess, than Once is, because Once is just so overpoweringly bittersweet, at mm -hmm. least at moments, mm -hmm. I feel like. Um, and this really isn't. It's a much it's a much lighter movie. It's just kind of... Um, it's, it's, very, it's very nice. It's very affirming, I guess, if I want to use word yeah <laughs> but they somehow like uh sidestep it feeling corny 
Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there is a scene in the movie where uh, the two, the the uh, one lady and Mark Ruffalo's daughter, they like go shopping. Right. <laughs> but it doesn't feel too cornwall. No, they don't show like a shopping montage or no, anything and that's, like that. That's really what I think. I, that's the thing that I was the most happy about from seeing once was that Mm -hmm. yeah once has some bittersweetness to it but it's also really corny and (laughs) it it just really is it's it's really a a sort of romantic fantasy of what it's like to make music with Mm -hmm. um with other people and um i don't know why that made everything go out of focus but it did. Um, the camera doesn't want to work with us anymore. No, I don't want my fantasies ruined, says camera. But um, I, I was really happy that this, like, out of honestly, out of everything, and this is just, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a music producer, and I've, I've made albums and all that kind of stuff. The only thing in this that's like, even kind of far fetched and unrealistic, is that a music producer would say, let's record an album outdoors. Like that (laughs) is Mm -hmm. probably the worst idea possible for how to record an album. If we could do one minor spoiler, I kept wondering like, were they going to try to mix out the, the, the turn on the fucking music part in the album? Like that would kind of ruin the flow of the song. You have to believe that they got everything in one take. (laughs) Yes. That everything was was also like, this is a completely different kind of a fantasy of what making music is like. Yeah. This is everything is right exactly. Because they set the up like, time. well, this and this and this could go wrong, and they pay that off in like a montage where they kind of show like the cops sort of chase them one time. Luckily, Mark right Ruffalo after they to, were done with the song. Yeah, they were totally done and wrapping up anyway. Yeah. Mark Ruffalo has to pay off street kids at one point mm-hmm. with like a dollar and some cigarettes, but mostly it goes. <laughs> Totally fine. The, the other thing that was funny was in the test screening, um, one of the questions they asked was, you know, do you like the music? Um, who who do you think would like the music? Like, you know, what kind of an audience do you think this mm-hmm. music was, is for? And we were pretty, like, generally, like, it's it, it's pretty wide. You know, it's, I mean, it's it's got that indie rock, folk, mm-hmm. Lisa yeah. Loeb kind of vibe to it. Um, and... The Adam Levine stuff is very Adam Levine. Adam Levine. Yeah, yeah. yeah Adam yeah, it's Levine. Dead um, on Maroon Five. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, they they asked, um, or somebody I think in the audience actually asked if they were going to have like a soundtrack or if that would be something that you know like you could upgrade your mm-hmm. ticket and get the soundtrack kind of thing. And the uh, person asking the questions asked us if we would be interested in the soundtrack. And someone said, yeah, for a dollar. <laughs> I'd buy it for a dollar. Yeah. Yep. So they set yeah. that up in the film itself. I feel like yeah. that's not really how this movie worked. Why did why did I right. why did I pay the full ticket price? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as a musician, all my music is available for free at <laughs> DaleMaxfield.com because <laughs> I do actually understand how the music industry works these days. Mm-hmm. Um, and a dollar is um, is the same as asking for nothing on your on your album. It, it's just more difficult for people to do. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's better to give your stuff away and uh, and get more people to hear it and let them feel like they owe you something. True. At some point, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I would much rather have five thousand people download my stuff for free um, than have five hundred people pay me a dollar for yeah. it. So <laughs> that's just that's just me. Yeah. Hey, we get excited having thirty people watch us do improv. That's a good Very night. True. Yeah. Very exactly. True. Um, I wanted to talk real quick about the other part that I really love, mm-hmm. uh, the love letter to New York oh, that was yeah. in this movie. And they did it, once again, sidestepping cheesy. It wasn't just like shots of like well-known New York, like landmarks and mm-hmm. historical monuments. It was like they were in like, you know, street corner cafes in the mm-hmm. bodegas. It looked very, I mean, it was genuine, you know? Um, and that's a hard thing to do, I mm-hmm. feel, in movies. Uh it always feels just like an advertisement for like the travel bureau of New York mm-hmm. where this like it really let it influence the characters. Yeah. 
kind of in that way that New York really is an inspiring place. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like an idea someone would come up with. I'm sure there probably are actually albums out there already of somebody recording just something on the street in New York. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. So, it was good. Um, we liked it. Hope you enjoyed our review. Um, check out all the rest of our reviews. If you like the way we do reviews, like us and subscribe to us. And check out all the written and video reviews at dalemaxfield.com. Guys, the cops. Watching. It's the cops. Oh, man, <laughs> you got to get this review out of oh, here. No. <laughs> See ya.